My name is Sarah. I'm with McGraw-Hill Education, and I'm going to be doing some introductions and running our polls during the webinar. Before I introduce our speakers, I want to first extend my deepest gratitude to everyone who is lending their voice to this effort and participating in this webinar. The work that each of these organizations do is so monumental in making the world a better place for young people, and I am so excited for all of our attendees to hear what the speakers have to offer to your community. So thank you, everyone, for being here. With us today, we have Karen Davis, who is Senior Vice President of Global Philanthropy and Social Impact at Hasbro. We are thrilled and thankful to have Karen with us today because her work is one of the reasons that we're able to all come together. So thank you, Karen. We'll hear from Jill McManigal of Kids for Peace, which is home to the ever wonderful Great Kindness Challenge. Thank you, Jill. We are always excited to hear from Jill and eternally thankful because she has played, also played a major role in gathering this group together for the webinar. Then we'll have Eric Stangvik from No Bully, Jessica Brunquist from Rock Your World, Andrea Kahn from Special Olympics North America, Joaquin Tamayo from Stand for Children, Kimbara Jardine Patterson from World's Largest Lesson, and last but not least, Karen L. Daniel from Youth Service America. So it is quite the group. It's very exciting to have everybody here together. So before we get to each speaker, we're going to go through two quick polls. If I can ask you all to click the answer that best defines who you are and what your role is, I'm going to have you go ahead and do so now. And while we're giving everyone a chance to answer, I did want to draw your attention to a few items on your screen. You'll see two places to check questions or comments, and those are both oriented towards the bottom of your screen. Um, you have a chat box which is um, a great place to put any kind of questions that you have for any of the speakers. Uh, it's a great spot to put, um, you know, if you want to interact with each other, find out where people are from. And then you're also going to have the Q&A box, which is sort of below the slides. Um, that one's great for any kind of questions that you have um, for technical questions. I'm going to give everybody another moment to answer. We're looking for um, your role. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if our poll function there. I'll tell you what, it looks like we are just seeing webinar goals. Yeah, I don't think you guys were able to click on the poll, so don't worry about it. I'm not sure some technical problems. So we're just going to jump right into the webinar goals. And yeah, I see some people are putting their um, instead of entering the poll, they're using the chat box, which is great. You guys are super flexible and adaptive. Thank you. So you're more than welcome to put those uh, into the chat box. So I'm going to go ahead um, and jump into our webinar goals. So for today, um, we are going to really learn a lot about kindness. We're going to get inspired about kindness, learn about innovative organizations that can drive that inspiration, and then we're going to walk away with some resources and ideas to elevate kindness in a variety of environments. I'm very excited. And then for our agenda, we're going to start with an introduction. We're going to move into the partner presentation. Uh, and then we're going to open up for questions. You guys are going to do just what you're doing right now. And again, thank you so much for being so flexible with our, our polls there and just hopping right into the chat box. Um, that's fantastic. You guys are great. It looks like we have a lot of counselors, a lot of principals, special education, K-12, K-5. This is great. We have a really good, a good variety of people here. This is awesome. Thank you, everybody. Okay. So, and again, with questions, if you have any questions for any speaker at any time during the webinar, just go ahead and um, throw that in the chat box. Okay. So with that, I'm actually going to head and pass on to Karen Davis of Be Fearless, Be Kind. Take it away, Karen. Hi, thank you, Sarah, and to the whole McGraw-Hill team for today, to Jill for Kids from Peace, and to our philanthropic partners for presenting today, and to all of you who obviously care about our children and the need to develop empathy and compassion in them. Hopefully you know Hasbro, and that's where I work. Um, if you have ever played with Candyland or maybe lost a few houses in Monopoly or been a target of a Nerf blaster or perhaps in your school even played with Play-Doh, then you know some of who we are. Um, and I want to thank you because if you happen to buy any of those products, 
you've allowed us to be able to really make the purpose that we all strive for every day to make the world a better place for children and their families come alive. And that work that we are doing here today around Be Fearless, Be Kind um, is made possible because of the philanthropic dollars that the company flows to us. So I want you to know that Hasbro is devoted to this purpose of philanthropy where we stand up for children and we really work hard to try to create a universe where every child experiences hope, kindness, and joy. And last year we were able to help 4 million children. Um, many of the partners on the phone were a big part of that. 94% of our employees volunteered. It's very much a part of our DNA. Um, and we were really thrilled and humbled to be recognized as the number one company for corporate social responsibility. In October of 2016, we decided to expand our philanthropic work that we were doing in the youth service space and to really lean more into the development of compassion and empathy in children. And that's where Be Fearless, Be Kind was born. The organizations you'll hear from today are part of that consortium of the leading nonprofits in the space that are delivering those services. So what is Be Fearless, Be Kind? Sarah, if you can move the slide. Um, it really was designed to empower kids to have empathy, compassion, and courage to stand up for others, to include everyone, and to make a difference. So our call to action is pretty simple. It's stand up, be inclusive, and make a difference. And we're hoping that through this work, we're able to provide the tools and resources that parents and educators need to really help make um, people aware of the need to develop empathy and the fact that it is a skill, and to make it easier to put kindness into action. Um, all the tools and resources um, are on Be Fearless, Be Kind, as well as all of the partners. You can get to them through the site. If, you, um, you know, if you're on the site, you'll find those links. Sarah, if you can move the page. Um, I just want to share with you a quick look at some of what's available there. We have the toolkit, as most of you know, Ashoka is really doing a lot of great work in empathy. They've developed a toolkit for us. There are videos for mindfulness. So if you need to take a break and do some mindfulness, there's adult versions and there's also some that you can share with those in your classroom. Lots of other resources. Um, one thing in particular I'd love to share with you is our pledge. Um, we last year took 10 youth who were outstanding, had done all kinds of great things. They make you feel like you've done nothing or made me feel like I've done nothing in this world. They are, were amazing and helped us develop um, this pledge with the spoken word artist Matt Stossel. Some of you probably recognize that name. Don Stossel is his father. Hi, everyone. Sorry about that. I think we lost uh, audio there for a moment. So we're going to hop back in with Karen. And up next, we have Jill. So Karen, if you want to go ahead and, and hop back in right where you were. OK. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. Um, so I was talking about the pledge that was developed by the youth, um, and our um, wonderful partners at Creative Visions did a beautiful uh, video that if you go to the Fearless Be Kind website, you can watch, you can share with your students, and it shows the process of developing the pledge, and it's, it's, it's a much longer one um, than what I'm going to you know, read uh, today, but um, it's really meaningful and I think very powerful, and as of um, we in November, launched a campaign with YSA uh, called Kindness Rising to encourage people and kids and obviously adults and caregivers to go on and take the pledge. So far we've had 335,000 people that have done that since November. And you also can continue to go on if you want to share it and have your kids take it, that would be great. The pledge really is, I pledge to be fearless and kind, to be inclusive, to stand up for those who need my help, and to make a difference whenever I can, wherever I can, because I can. So there are so many layers to this work, and each of our partners will be describing what the programs they have available. And while we've provided the philanthropic dollars and resources to help make these programs free, they are the boots on the ground making it all possible, and we obviously could never do this alone. They're wonderful, and I hope that you will take advantage of the great resources available. And thank you again for caring so much to be on this today. Just for children. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I'm going to ask all of our speakers to go on mute. Thank you. 
And next we have Jill from Kids for Peace. Jill, take it away. Yes, good um, Good morning and good afternoon to you all. It's, we're so happy to be part of this webinar in McGraw-Hill. Thank you once again for your wonderful support of the whole child. We're, we're so grateful for that. Um, I'm the first of the partner um, organizations to present, and I just want to let the viewers and the audience know that each one of our partners is going to present one project that you can really take away with you to continue the kindness in your classroom or um, in your home in the community. So I'll be um, I'm happy to share the, an overview of Kids for Peace and then one of the projects you can get going with right away. So next slide. So Kids for Peace um, has two programs. Our mission is to create peace through youth leadership, global service, excuse me, youth leadership, global friendships, community service, and um, thoughtful acts of kindness. We have two programs. We have our Peace Pledge program and we have our Great Kindness Challenge. Um, we have a pretty amazing impact with over 10 million students engaged currently in Kids for Peace programs and we're on track for 20 million students this year. Um, this is something for neighborhoods and it's also something for schools with our chapters that we have. Um, we currently are in 121 countries and we have over 155 active chapters around the world. And then with our Great Kindness Challenge, we have reached over 10 million students there. So that's just an overview of Kids for Peace. Um, Peace Pledge Program, I'm not going to go into today, but I do want to tell you about our Great Kindness Challenge. And that's something that you can do with your students right now. So if we can go to the next slide, I'll tell you about the Great Kindness Challenge. Um, the Great Kindness Challenge is a school and now a family initiative. It's a way to let students practice kindness and really take the lead in creating a culture of kindness in their school and in the community and in the world. Um, for schools, it is um, really easy to implement. It's one of the beauties of the Great Kindness Challenge is, is um, teachers, counselors, parents, they can just get the checklist, download it, and then they are able to present that to the students and they can take it away and practice kindness on their own and self-initiated. Self -initiated. Um, we also have a really robust toolkit for schools that want to take it that extra step to really give this boost and um, energy and this um, extra dose of joy and, and um, happiness to their school. So schools are, um, are invited to participate in the Great Kindness Challenge Week our official week is January, tw January 22nd through the 26th, but schools can do it whenever it's best for them. Um, it is free, so students just need to go to our website, sign up, and you'll get um, all the tools and more that you would need to create a culture of kindness. And one of the things that we have heard over and over from schools is how fun it is. Um, we know that students who are happy, who are enjoying the learning experience, um, who feel safe and appreciated, and um, they are the ones that are going to learn the best. So we really want to focus on the fun factor um, so that they have, all students have the joy as they're creating that culture of kindness. And this year, we're really happy to say that we're um, launching a family edition of our Great Kindness Challenge. Um, we've, been, ha we've had so many schools ask us for a way to continue the kindness at home, and the family edition um, does just that. And um, we're thrilled that Be Fearless, Be Kind is our presenting sponsor of that family edition. And it's also something that you can get for free. It's fun. Um, it's a year round. You can do the checklist um, whenever it's best for your family to keep that kindness going. So on our next slide, it gives the how to get involved with it. Um, it's really easy. To, um, just need to go to our website, sign up, and get the free tools, checklist and tools. Um, it's absolutely not too late to participate this year's Great Kindness Challenge. Um, we've had schools that found out about it the day of the great, the start of the Great Kind of Challenge, and they jumped right in, were able to participate. So there's plenty of time to still get everything ready for this year's Great Kindness Challenge. And then after you sign up, you'll get um, all the tools to download. You can get copies, send those out to the students, and then just enjoy the week. And um, we do have a, a robust Facebook page that gives lots more ideas of how to really participate. Um, basically, it's a way to give every single student, every single adult now, a way to joyfully practice kindness. So we invite you all to take the Great Kindness Challenge, and um, we are here to support you with any questions you might have as you are implementing that. And um, we just are grateful for any, everyone who is showing that kindness matters.
that is it for Kids for Peace. Thank you so much, Jill. And before we pass on to our next speaker, I did want to flag Jill some questions for you. Um, there's a lot of chatter going on in the chat box between our participants, which is awesome. First of all, Meg Jansen, welcome. It looks like Meg is the Kids for Peace co-chapter leader at Hope Elementary in California. That's great. Um, and then we had a couple of questions, the first one being, how can we continue the kindness on campus in our community after the Great Kindness Challenge? Oh, great questions. Um, so continuing the kindness afterwards really is, um, well, we have a, a very robust toolkit, and our toolkit has all kinds of ideas to continue the kindness. Um, student, um, schools are invited to start a Kids for Peace chapter. That's one way. Um, we also now have all these fabulous partners who are on the webinar today, and you can get involved with any of their projects, too. Um, we are really excited to work collaboratively with these other um, beautiful organizations doing really important work. So you could um, continue the kindness through activities through any of our partners that are on, the, on this webinar. That's great. Thank you so much, Jill, and thank you for joining us. So we're going to go thank ahead you. and move on. And next, we have Eric Stangvik from No Bully. So Eric, I'm going to pass it to you. Great. Thank you. So uh, we at No Bully, you can move to the second slide. Um, our organization is a nonprofit organization based out of San Francisco. And we're dedicated to eradicating bullying and cyberbullying in schools across the country. Um, we have a year-long program in schools, and I'm pleased to note that we have about a 90% success rate of eradicating bullying in schools. And um, uh, we do that by igniting the compassion and empathy in students along with um, the adults within uh, the school system. And with that, you can move to the next slide. So we had the good fortune of um, convening with uh, Hasbro to build um, what we call a Peace Summit. Um, we have now uh, created the Peace Summit Project Guide in conjunction with Hasbro that is now uh, integral in all of our school programs. Um, I've included, uh, um, and you'll be able to download this from um, this particular site, uh, the No Bully Peace Summit Project Guide, um, which is going to give you the tools uh, to create a student peace summit, either in your classrooms, clubs, or after school programs. Um, we have over 77,000 kids uh, participating in the peace summit uh, through our school programs this year, and it's just been a tremendous way to ignite um, uh, kindness in these kids and really think about how, what type of school uh, they want to participate in. And so it allows them to build a social vision for the kindness and peace within their own environment. Um, next slide, please. So um, you can do one of two things uh, in order to participate in this. You can um, download the Nobly uh, Peace Project Guide as outlined here. Um, and then for those of you, so it's a step-by-step -step guide of how to do this. Um, or secondarily, uh, feel free to email us at peacesummit at nobully.org. And um, we'll be happy to help assist guide um, uh, your teams with, um, with this process. So again, thank you to all, that, uh, all of the folks participating today, and particularly to Karen Davis at Hasbro for um, sponsoring this tremendous uh, project. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Eric. And I just want to quickly flag to everyone um, who is in this webinar today that Eric mentioned some handouts. And you can access, we actually have handouts from a couple different speakers. Um, you can access those. You'll see an icon at the top of your screen next to where it says QA in little chat boxes. Um, it looks like a stack of papers. You can access that um, anytime that you're in this platform during this webinar and grab some handouts that our speakers have graciously provided. So that's really good to know. So thank you, Eric. And now we are going to move on to Jessica Burnquist at Creative Vision. So Jessica, I'm passing it to you. Thank you, Sarah. That's so kind. 
Uh, we are also very excited, Creative Visions and Rock Your World, to be part of this incredible experience and to um, have such like-minded educators and educational communities joining us today. Um, so if you want to go to the next slide, Sarah. Thank you. So Rock Your World is a dynamic project-based project curriculum. We seek to engage middle and high school students in the use of creating, uh, creative media to take informed action toward issues that they care about. But I do want to add that we have tons of educators using our program right now in the elementary school uh, system. And they, I would say our lessons and our curriculum is very easily modified. And I'd also want to mention that it's free. I'm still teaching, there's the bell, and fully aligned to Common Core standards. Um, what we really are trying to do is to inspire global citizenship while developing 21st century skills. We start with an understanding of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the Convention on the Rights of the Child, and students then begin to research issues of choice. And that, to me, is the critical element of Rock Your World, and that's why it's so easily modifiable, because your students are the ones who are choosing the issues that matter to them. Um, today, though, we are going to be focusing on resources that we have that will enable you and your students or children, whomever you're working with, your youth, to start an awareness campaign for the kind action that they decide to take. So if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide. Um, part of our curriculum is to create a, an awareness campaign. And so the steps really involve inquiry and action. And I love this challenge because action is really at its heart. Um, and I think that aligns with the Great Kindness Challenge, too. And so we're looking for the students to identify an issue that, care, that they care about in the way of kindness. Um, at the high school I currently teach, my students wanted to address other teenagers um, other children who are in need. And so they opted to start a blanket drive and a food drive for students that are living in temporary housing. Um, you can then determine your timeline. Maybe you have a quarter if you're an educator or a semester. Maybe you only have a couple of weeks or you work with kids in a youth group setting. Then, if you visit our website, we have a toolkit that can help you to create an awareness campaign um, in a much shorter amount of time than if you can stretch it out for uh, an actual lesson unit. The idea, though, is that once they um, identify what it is they want to do in the, in the way of kindness, we want to help them to take action. If you would go ahead and, and switch to the next slide. And so what I would recommend is that you visit our, our website. Um, when you get to rockyourworld.org, you'll see a tab for curriculum or the toolkit if your time is limited. And when you click on that, you'll find a variety of ways to start to take action and to create awareness. Namely, um, you can use film and make a public service announcement or conduct a letter writing campaign or some various other listed activities such as songwriting. Um, I recommend hosting an awareness night to let your youth feature what they've done and to involve the community. And again, you can structure your campaign around individual concern or community concern. And that's one way to extend the kindness beyond the classroom at all turns. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us on the Rock Your World website. There is a button to do just that. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Jessica. That was wonderful. We are all learning a lot, and it's going great. So now we're going to move on to Andrea Kahn from the Special Olympics. So Andrea, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to you. Great, thank you so much. I'm so thrilled to be able to speak to so many folks today um, about our Special Olympics Unified Champion Schools program. I think probably most of the people on this webinar will be familiar with Special Olympics, but possibly not everybody knows all of the um, activities and programming that Special Olympics offers now. We are so much more than a sports event, and we, uh, we we serve more than just people with intellectual disabilities. There are benefits to everyone in our communities, in our schools, and in our societies that can participate and be part of what we're doing in Special Olympics. You can go to the next slide. Uh, we serve 5 million 
athletes with intellectual disabilities around the world, but we're also the largest collector of data in health for people with intellectual disabilities. And we provide programming through our education initiatives in 10,000 schools around the world. 5,500 of those schools are in the United States in our Unified Champion Schools program. And that's what I want to tell you a little bit about today um, because it would be so amazing to have all of you involved in Unified Champion Schools with us. The um, Unified Champion Schools program is really a strategy for promoting schools of acceptance and inclusion by engaging students in inclusive sports activities, inclusive youth leadership activities, and whole school activities that get the entire school involved. We're promoting positive school climate um, and all kinds of positive outcomes in academics and social emotional learning. Students become advocates for change in their schools and communities utilizing the existing Special Olympics activities, which I'm gonna talk a little bit more about in, in a minute. But um, when you combine unified sports, which some of you may be familiar with, um, an inclusive sports program with an inclusive club and school-wide activities that engage everyone in the school in campaigns that um, promote um, respect or um, uh, promote a, a pledge to not use the R word or um, uh, activities where all the students come out to be fans in the stands for their unified sports activities. These kinds of things are really um, supplemental to existing character education and bully prevention programs, um, SEL curriculums that may be offered in the school, and they really amplify uh, the, the social inclusion that's so important for students to feel engaged, accepted, and welcome in their schools. Uh, Special Olympics is a sports organization that is really focused on the outcome of social inclusion for students. So we can move to the um, next slide because the, the way in which this program works, uh, I mentioned the three, three areas, it's really a holistic approach where um, the entire school can see this impact on every student in the school, even if they're not all directly involved in those inclusive sports. So we have, uh, you might have an after school or an interscholastic unified sports program, or you may have a unified PE class there are a lot of ways that that inclusive sport can take place. We are doing Unified Champion Schools in all grade levels, uh, K through 12, and um, there are different ways that that looks in each of the grade levels, but we have lots of resources. If you click on the um, link that was mentioned, but um, also go to specialolympics.org backslash Unified Champion Schools, you will see lots of um, resources to support you in this programming. The inclusive youth leadership might be a club. It could be an existing club that you convert or you could start a new club. And then obviously the whole school engagement are activities so that everybody understands that inclusion and acceptance for everyone is how the school rolls. It's the way we do business and it's a norm. Inclusion becomes a norm for everybody. And I wanna to go to this last slide and just mention that this is really an evidence-based program. And we have a robust 10 years of evaluation and research that um, says, among other many amazing um, impact statistics, 88% of the teachers involved in this program say that we're reducing bullying and offensive language. Um, we find 96 to 97% of the teachers say that the Unified Champion Schools program makes their schools more inclusive, increases opportunities for students with and without intellectual disability to work together, raises awareness of students with intellectual disability, and ensures that their schools have a positive school climate and an inclusive school climate. Um, th these are obviously important to all of us as educators, parents, and members of our community. So um, again, if you wanna get involved, if you wanna get your school involved, you can connect with your state Special Olympics program or uh, the links that are in all of the resources that we have attached to this. Um, presentation. Thanks so much for letting us share this with you. Thank you, Andrea. That was great. And we are going to go ahead and move on to our next speaker, Joaquin Tamayo with Stanford Children. Joaquin, passing it to you. 
Great. Thank you so much uh, for uh, everyone's time. Good afternoon. My name is Joaquin Tamayo. I'm with the organization Stand for Children. We are an education nonprofit advocacy, advocacy organization whose mission is to ensure that all children, regardless of their background, graduate from high school prepared for and with access to college uh, and career training. We are so grateful to the Hasbro Foundation for their support um, of our new Middle School Kindness Challenge, uh, to Jill and to Kids for Peace at the Great Kindness Challenge for inviting us to join in today's webinar, as well as to all of our partners here today. I'm so excited to present on our new program, as well as to say thank you for everyone's uh, contribution uh, to ensuring that all of our students have safe, supportive, and kind schools to attend because we know that if they don't have those really supportive conditions for learning, they ultimately won't be able to graduate uh, from school ready for life um, and for college and careers, and that's why we're, we're all here today. Um, so thank you so much uh, for everyone's investment um, in this important work. And I think just building on what everyone else has said during the webinar today, it really does go without saying that more than ever, me, at least more than you know, you know, ever in the last 20 years or so, it is so critical to ensure that all of our students are able to attend schools that are kind and supportive, and that as Karen said at the top of the webinar, that they learn the skills that it takes to be authentically kind in school and in life, like how to be empathetic, like how to develop strong peer relationships, how to develop positive mindsets, um, how to navigate you know, their world both in person with their peers as well as online on social media increasingly these days. Um, it is so important that we teach those skills, that we reinforce those skills, that we celebrate those skills um, intentionally in our schools, thoughtfully and systematically, not leaving it to chance because we know that those really are a part of those 21st century skills that all of our students need, again, to be successful in school and in life and to be great citizens in our country and in the world um, you know, for peace uh, uh, moving on into the future. So we're super excited to present on the new Middle School Kindness Challenge. And what we've done at Stanford Children in collaboration with all of our partners um, is really to provide a unique free opportunity for any school in the country with any combination of grades four to eight to participate in our program to immediately teach and foster kindness among all of their students. So let's get to that now. Um, next slide, please. So what we're doing with the new Middle School Kindness Challenge is we're helping, again, any school across the country with any combination of grades four to eight to meet the moment that we're in right now, um, to really provide all of their teachers, and support staff with the tools that they need to immediately teach and foster kindness among all of, their, uh, all of their students. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because it's important that we immediately improve school climate in all of our uh, country's middle schools. Um, that, that time of, of, uh, of the K-12 curriculum where we see the most bullying, the most harassment, the, the greatest number of incidents related to meanness and hostility um, that are really undermining the positive impact that our schools can have. So we're here to improve school climate. We're also here to reduce unnecessary suspensions from schools. Lots of the suspensions in our schools result from a lack of kindness, a lack of empathy um, and understanding in our schools. And we also know that suspensions really undermine the ability of our students to do well in school. Um, it may be a surprise uh, for the audience on the line today, but you know, a student being suspended even one time between grades six to 12 um, can really have a tremendous impact on their ability to graduate from high school. Uh, the, the stat is um, the students who are suspended even one time are four times less likely to graduate from high school than peers who are not suspended. We can reduce a great number of these suspensions by focusing on making sure that all of our students are treated with kindness and that their teachers and their support staff have the ability and have the capacity and the resources to do that um, so that we can reduce those suspensions. And then finally, we also want to see that we can foster um, effective social and emotional development among all of our students. Um, and so we're helping our schools meet the moment with the new Middle School Kindness Challenge in three easy steps. So number one, visit www.middleschoolkindnesschallenge.org to accept the challenge and begin your school's journey towards immediately teaching and fostering kindness among all of your students. Once you're in the challenge, you will have access to, as a teacher, as a support staff, as an administrator, the best-in-class lessons and activities that we have aggregated from nationally recognized partners like Making Caring Common at Harvard University, the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence, 
Facing History in Ourselves, Inspire Ed at Facebook, and the Greater Good Science Center. They have all contributed free of charge, best in class lesson plans that teachers and support staff and administrators can immediately implement in any classroom setting, in an advisory, in a homeroom. Again, free of charge to any school with grades four to eight so that students can begin not only understanding the power and the value of kindness, but the practical application of the underlying skills of being kind. For instance, like how to listen actively, how to come to consensus with your friends and your peers, how to confront stereotypes. And newly in our, in our new um, cycle that we'll be launching in just a few weeks, a whole new set of activities related to spreading cyber kindness, offering students positively framed uh, practical skills uh, that will enable them to be kind online, uh, to really think about how they are uh, presenting themselves in social media, if they use social media, and how to combat, not just to you know, not post negative things online, but really how to combat in a positive way um, the kinds of negative images and, and video clips and other types of uh, media that they're encountering on a daily basis. And so we're launching brand new activities that we encourage everyone to take advantage of so that teachers and support staff and administrators in our schools really do have the, the, the ability and the capacity to immediately do this work um, with their students. The final step of the Middle School Kindness Challenge, because uh, as um, Eric said uh, at Nobuli and some of my other partners, the goal here is to make kindness a permanent aspect of the school community. Just as the previous speaker said, this is how we do business. Um, and so what we, what we challenge every single school to do beyond the immediate teaching and fostering of kindness is to create a kindness ritual that becomes part of the daily fabric of a school's life. And so in the fall cycle we launched in September, and we had hundreds of schools participating, and schools created cr tremendous kindness rituals. For instance, an evening of kindness, I brought in parents where students were able to teach um, their parents and their families the value and the importance and the practice of being kind. Uh, schools created kindness clubs across the country so that students took a leadership role in, in spreading kindness and promoting kindness throughout their, their school. Schools created wellness centers and kindness rock gardens where students can meditate and, you know, come down from maybe being angry or having an issue with a student, you know, a safe space in their school environment. A, a school created a kindness quilt where students reflected on what it meant to be kind and they created um, a beautiful quilt that now graces their schools. Schools are so, so tremendous activities um, in order to make kindness a permanent aspect of their school. And that's what we offer, again, free of charge to any school with grades 4 to 8, this immediate ability to do this in their school to really make a difference. Um, and we're so happy to <laughs> do this completely online. Um, so visit, um, next slide please. You can visit www.middleschoolkindnesschallenge.org to RSVP for the next cycle that will begin again in just a few short weeks. And as you can see here, since we launched the program in September of last year, we already have over 600 schools uh, across 47 states in the District of Columbia uh, registered to participate in the Middle School Kindness Challenge with over 5,000 educators that are actively teaching and fostering kindness um, in their schools and as we speak. We look forward to, you know, you know, if not doubling, you know, tripling or quadrupling these numbers across the country because we really do believe um, that it is, it is incredibly important that every school across the country intentionally and systematically teach kindness and the underlying skills to be authentically kind in school and in life to all of their students. That's how we're going to improve the conditions for student learning. That's how we're going to improve student achievement. And that's how we're really going to um, achieve our, all of our vision, I believe, uh, to have kind, supportive and safe schools for all of our students. Um, that's really the investment that we need to make uh, in our country's future. And we thank you so much um, for your, your attention here. Um, please again visit today www.middleschoolkindnesschallenge.org um, to enter your email address, RSVP for the next cycle that we're going to launch um, with new resources related to cyberbullying and spreading online kindness. Um, we look forward to having you join us in this journey. Um, if you go to the next slide, uh, just to close out here, uh, a, a few images from actual schools that participated in the fall. Um, there's some great images of students creating their kindness rock garden. Um, you know, so they just get, get a sense of how we're already um, making a difference um, in schools across the country. And we look forward to having you join us um, in that journey uh, this spring, www.middleschoolkindnesschallenge.org.
Uh, with that, again, thank you so much to Jill and Kids for Peace and Hasbro and McGraw-Hill and all of our partners. Um, we look forward to, uh, to doing this, this really uh, important work with you moving forward. Thank you. Joaquin, thank you so much. Don't leave us quite yet. Um, we have one question for you that just came in. If you could sure. speak to how the middle school kindness challenge is similar to the great kindness challenge that Jill spoke about recently. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think they actually are great complements of each other. So what we're doing through the Middle School Kindness Challenge specifically is offering to school-based administrators, teachers, other support staff like counselors and social workers with practical lesson plans that they can implement in their school setting at, at, a, at a time of their choosing in a way that works for their school. So for instance, um, lesson plans that range from five minutes to a whole hour, you know, lesson that can be implemented in the advisory setting, in regular, the regular classroom setting, in a homeroom, in after school clubs. It's a bit different. It's, it's not the same checklist that the Great Kindness Challenge has um, that, you know, students and educators and, and, and the like um, can work on to enact that daily practice of kindness. Um, what we think we're able to do with the Middle School Kindness Challenge is to provide teachers, the students, teachers, and their support staff um, with resources so they can teach students those skills um, of being kind, like empathy, like listening, like uh, developing, um, you know, strong peer relationships, so that then they could, they could um, effectively complete the checklist uh, uh, that the Great Kindness Challenge, you know, provides. So that's how I see that as, as being a compliment. Um, you know, so we would encourage, you know, every single school that's participating in the Great Kindness Challenge to take a look and participate in the Middle School Kindness Challenge, assuming, you know, they have some combination of grades four to eight. Um, and we, we are going to encourage all the schools that are in the Middle School Kindness Challenge to take a look at the Great Kindness Challenge so that there really is that symbiotic relationship between our programs. Um, because really, at the end of the day, and I'm sure Jill will agree, the more, you know, the, the greater opportunities that our students have to, to enact kindness, you know, within the normal course of the school day, so they don't see kindness as something separate from, you know, academic learning or, or, or being in the school, you know, the better. Um, so that's why, again, we are so privileged and tremendously um, grateful that we're able to be part of today's um, webinar, but also in partnership with the Great Kindness Challenge, um, because, you know, these are exactly the types of tools and resources that our kids and our teachers need um, immediately. Great. Thank you, and this, Joaquin. And, and, we actually, and Sarah, oh, Sarah, just really yeah. quickly, this is Jill with the Great yeah, Kindness Challenge. Yeah. And, and I absolutely agree that we, can, we all do work together, and the more that we support each other and work collaboratively, the more we're going to have lasting peace and kindness for everybody. So it's a joy to be able to partner with the Middle School Kindness Challenge. I just want thank someone to say thank, thank you, Joaquin. Jill. Thank you. And you guys, for Jill and Joaquin, we actually just had a question come in from Dana. She says that we are in elementary school, and we only go up to fifth grade, but we want to do this. Is that a possibility? Do you guys have any advice for her about maybe which program would be better, or how she can make use of both? So the Great Kindness Challenge is a pre-K through high school program. Um, so that's um, made for all grades, and it's a, a one-week program for all, for all grades. So that um, you could just jump right in and do that. And um, Joaquin, I'll let you answer the second part of that question. Sure, that's a, that's a great question. Um, and so um, what we have uh, is the opportunity for, I, I, forget, I think it was Dana, you said her name was, for Dana School to absolutely participate in the, in the challenge. It is designed for, for grades four to eight, specifically in terms of the lesson plans. But I'll tell you what we found was we had dozens of elementary schools, pre-K to five, participate in the last cycle and what they were able to do was to adapt the resources and the lesson plans so that the, the, the younger students and the, the little ones, even as low as pre-K, were able to take advantage of some of the opportunity to practice, you know, kindness. Um, and so, you know, our experienced educators out there in schools know how to do this. They're able to take our lesson plans, again, free of charge, downloadable, printable, and adaptable. They're all open source materials vis-a-vis -vis our partners. Those are the, the permissions that we have from them. So, so we encourage um, elementary uh, teachers and administrators to go ahead and accept our challenge and adapt it in a way that works for the school. And that ultimately was our, was our hope was that at the end of the day, our program was completely and entirely adaptable and flexible so that every single school can make the best use out of it as possible to, to spread um, you know, life-changing kindness among their students. 
Great. Thank you, Joaquin. It's awesome to see how many options that our audience has available today um, that are you know, really flexible for, for their students. So we are going to go ahead and pass the torch to Kinvara Jardine Patterson from World's Largest Lesson. So Kinvara, go ahead. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to echo what everyone else has said by saying thank you to um, Hasbro, McCall Home, and Kids for Peace. Um, so could we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, World's Largest Lesson is a global schools program. Um, it's delivered in partnership with UNICEF um, to encourage learning and action in support of the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals, or more commonly known as the Global Goals. They are a plan for people and planet to eliminate extreme poverty, reduce inequalities, and combat the threat of climate change by 2030. They have been agreed by all member states of the UN and will only be achieved if all governments, businesses, schools, and citizens contribute. Um, so supporting and taking action for the global goals takes kindness to people and planet to a different level. The world's largest lesson promotes the global goals as a framework for students to first understand global issues and then think about taking local level of actions of kindness and that ultimately contribute back to a global ambition. Being part of this worldwide community is highly impactful and engaging for students as it breaks down classroom walls and borders and makes young people feel part of a global generation of meaningful change makers. So to help you introduce the goals to your classroom, there are lots of free resources in multiple languages for you to use. Um, they are open source for you to, be, to amend and be as creative with as you wish. Our aim is to provide resources that help students connect personally with the goals and make them real in their lives. One example that I'm going to talk you through um, is Goal 5, the Gender Equality Project. Please could you go to the next slide. Thank you. The pro um, this project here enables students to think about and contribute to encouraging women and girls to have equal opportunities to be heard and to participate in all political, economic and public spheres. Um, so there's a two part lesson plan here, um, which was created for this goal. And the first is that students are invited to explore gender equality in leadership positions through the story of one inspiring leader, Malala Yousafzai. And then in a briefing video, Actress and UN, UN women's advocate Emma Watson explains the first task of a survey identifying the gender of figures of authority in students' local communities. Students are then instructed on how to convert these findings into a gender percentage ratio. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, the results of this survey act as a launch pad for educators to facilitate classroom discussions on gender equality and to show why kindness is needed in the classroom. The project provides an educational opportunity to bring the goals close to home, to show to the students that what they look at their own lives, goals that might not at first seem to be relevant to them, far. Students can then upload their results to our interactive map on our website, where they can compare their results with global averages. Not only asking young people to compare themselves with other countries, but asking them to imagine what it must be like to live in a country where gender equality is very unequal. This has already inspired hundreds of thousands of students around the world to make acts of kindness. For example, a mentoring program between older and younger girls to encourage confidence speaking in class has been set up in a school in Swaziland. There are lots of different ways of being kind in thought and action for both people and planet. And the effect of this project and other projects that we have, like our global food project, puts kindness into a global context. Uh, the outcome might be a very localized action, but for many students, the global context is very persuasive and adds as a new purpose to taking social action and service. On the World's Largest Lesson website, you can find further free and creative resources, video animations, lesson plans, and activities to introduce students to the other goals, and for them to be inspired to take further action to promote kindness around the world. Uh, it would be amazing if you could use the goals as creatively and widely as possible in your teaching and share with us what you are doing. Thank you so much to everyone who's been listening. Okay, thank you so much, King Farah. That was great. And now we are going to transition to Karen Daniel from Youth Changing the World, Youth Service America. Hi, Sarah, thanks. So YSA is a 31-year-old nonprofit organization based in Washington, D.C., and we encourage young people ages 5 to 25 to find their voice, take action, and make an impact on vital community issues. 
we're grateful to be a Be Fearless, Be Kind partner. And if you go to the next slide. Uh, you'll see here our signature campaign is our LEAD ASAP campaign where we are activating young people uh, throughout the course of the school year to um, be involved in service projects, acquire 21st century skills by solving real community problems over the course of the school year. We aim to engage 500,000 youth ages 5 to 18. As part of this campaign, we're working with Hasbro, uh, and this fall we led the Kindness Rising campaign. Uh, as part of that campaign, we were delighted to house the Be Fearless, Be Kind pledge on the Kindness Rising website. And to date, we've had 335,073 people take the pledge to Be Fearless, Be Kind. We're so grateful to all of the Be Fearless, Be Kind partners to, who have encouraged young people to visit that site and take the pledge. And thanks to Hasbro, 300,000 toys have been donated to young people in Florida, Puerto Rico, Texas, and California who have been victims of the recent hurricanes and fires. Today is the last day to register a project. We are encouraging young people who have pledged to follow up and really put their kindness and empathy into action by leading a service project that improves their community. And today is the last day to register a project to be eligible for a $250 grant. Uh, we have found that 59,000 kids to date have reported on the service projects they've done, and that work uh, will continue throughout the month, so we're excited to see how many young people do uh, participate and report on their projects. You'll see here on this slide YSA's program model for our LEAD ASAP campaign. ASAP are the four strategies that we find that young people make a difference in their communities. That's through awareness, service, advocacy, and philanthropy. And you'll see here our model of really asking youth to engage and participate in service projects and investing in youth through grants, uh, training, and, and recognition opportunities. We measure our impact really in two ways. One is through the skills that youth acquire, uh, and then uh, secondly through the global goals, which you have heard about already on this call. If you go to the next slide, please. You'll see here our information about our Global Schools of Service Network. We're excited about working with schools to really build a culture of kindness and empathy and service throughout their school network. We do uh, work with schools to really look at three major days of service as kind of hooks throughout the year, 9-11 Day, Martin Luther King Day, and Global Youth Service Day. You'll see here the website where you can access the application to be a global school of service. And we do work with schools over the course of the year to really provide technical assistance and training and grant opportunities to help schools really lead uh, service projects throughout the year. On the next slide, you'll see some of the resources that we offer at no charge to schools. You'll see our semester of service training course uh, which is an online training for schools to really look at creating a semester of service that really looks uh, deeply at an issue and helps young people plan service projects that are connected to teaching and learning in the classroom. On the left, you'll see two of our primary resources for teachers, our teacher toolkit, uh, which corresponds to that training and really helps teachers to facilitate classroom projects. And below are Classrooms with a Cause guide, which is a shorter uh, guide looking at projects that take place over a four to six period. And teachers often use this guide as a capstone project at the end of the year to really help um, reinforce the learning that's taken place over the year by applying it to, uh, an, to an issue. On the website that I mentioned, uh, schools can sign up to be a global school of service. They can plan their projects for Global Youth Service Day, which is coming up on April 20th through the 22nd. They can apply for grants uh, for the 2018-2019 school year. Uh, and we actually have a grant available right now on that site 
for this year's Global Youth Service Day for schools that are interested in planning projects around childhood hunger. We do have grants of $400 for students and $1,000 for schools to apply for projects. Uh, so again, we're so grateful to have the opportunity to work with Hasbro and all of the Be Fearless, Be Kind partners to really help young people put kindness and empathy into action through youth-led projects. And we would be delighted to speak with anyone on the call about what this might look like in your school uh, and how we can be helpful. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Karen. And a big thank you to all of our speakers who have shared with us today. We got just about to an hour with all of those speakers. It's wonderful. Um, we have learned so much from each other, from all of you, and I think it's really uplifting to hear about all the amazing initiatives that you're all pursuing in the name of a better, kinder world for our young people. Um, so I think we are going to wrap it up. And remember to visit these sites. I have dropped them in the chat box. You guys can kind of comb through and see you know, what you want to check out, when you want to learn more about. And then you can also check out the um, stack of papers document, this icon that is at the top of your screen to get some handouts. So I think we are going to wrap it up. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Bye, guys.